Hello, welcome to another episode of Everyday Amazing. I am your host, Guy Alton, and today I have a very special guest. We're talking social entrepreneurship. You don't want to go anywhere. Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday Amazing. Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday Amazing. Welcome back to the show. As always, I'm trying to bring you guys talented, amazing people. And today I have someone who's very amazing and very talented. You might have heard of him in Sacramento. If you don't, you're going to now. His name is Armani Easley. How you doing, sir? What's going on? <laughs> Great to, great to have you on the show. This is beautiful. Um, you, before we get into like what you do, man, I just want to say that uh, you know <laughs> this show is is constantly bringing um, just amazing people and, and connecting people, right? Yeah. And we have a mutual friend who was on season one, mm -hmm. Mr. Kaifa Yates, mm -hmm. and uh, he was he's such a like important figure in Sacramento because Absolutely. he's doing so much like. Uh, uh, just community outreach work and just bringing you know people together and just youth work, right? Yeah. So by knowing him, I actually came across you. Come on. And uh, when I seen you know uh, some of the work that you do in the community, I just like you know I gotta have that guy on the show. So just tell me a little bit about uh you know what what it, what you have been doing for Sacramento. Yes. So real quick, thank you for having me, Sky. You're doing your thing. It's been a blessing. I actually seen you. Very early when you had uh, Brent Sands, Trey Sands, mm -hmm. Impound, mm -hmm. one of my really good friends. So it was really cool to see him on there, as well as uh, Kaifa. Shout out to you. We actually going to the Laker game, Lakers Kings game next week. So uh, go LeBron. But I, uh, <laughs> I'm a Kings fan too because I support Project Optimism, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay. Uh, so my bad. Repeat the question so I can get this thing rocking for you, man. <laughs> what, what you what you need? Because this I, is man, exciting. Well, you know, we just want to let the people know about like. Okay, well, you mentioned Project Optimism. Yeah. First off, tell me tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, sheesh. Eight years officially being a nonprofit organization. Uh, co-founder, uh, and CEO of the organization. I have a really awesome uh, teammate, uh, brother. Uh, we're a business that turned into a brotherhood where I love that dude to life. His name is Ishmael Pruitt. I always say he's one of the coders to ever do it. So shout out to him. But yeah, man, a lot of what you're going to hear with this social impact entrepreneurship is really just a, a response to me wanting to be a change that I want to see and be what I needed. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, co-founded that organization eight years ago. But also if we even take a step back. Um, I've been doing this work for 14 years, almost 15 years now. And um, in a lot of ways, uh, I always tell people I'm not good at a lot of things, but the things that I'm good at, mm -hmm. I'm the best at. Okay. You can right. count on me, right? <laughs> okay. uh, but that's the way you walk into your purpose, right? And mm -hmm. so I know that I've been walking in purpose for a very long time, and I don't take that for granted. And so now I'm at a point where I'm like these builders. I'm just trying to stack more and more and more to see where, how far God wants me to take it, right? And so some of the vehicles that you already heard, Project Optimism, uh, but also the, the, the for-profit where that's easily done in company, where we're going to talk about the book. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about the consultant. We're going to talk about the speaking. I don't even call myself a motivational speaker. I call myself an empowerment facilitator. Uh, I always tell people I got the best seat in the room. I'm mm -hmm. here to facilitate greatness. And so if that's five people, or if that's a thousand people, I'm able to really facilitate something that allows for people to see their greatness. And so, uh, go ahead, because we're going to cook already now. <laughs> now, okay, so before we even get into the, some of the projects. Yeah, sorry just, about that. You know I'm just, ready. <laughs> just tell me a little bit about how did you know that this was your call? Man, tell me yeah. a little bit about yourself, man. Are you from Sacramento? Yeah. Um, so, I like to tell people I'm just from Northern California at this point, man, because I lived all the way up 80. Uh, from the Bay Area originally. Um, most of my life was in Richmond, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, how, like, you know how like you meet the bulk of your friends in like middle school, high school? That was Vallejo for me. Okay. And so uh, that, and then I ended up moving to Sacramento in high school where I went to a school called Monterey Trails, first graduating I class. Monterey Trails. Uh, first graduating class that so I might age me a little bit, but uh, one of the best things I ever, uh, that I was blessed with is my mom. She just kept on moving us up 80 to just find a better life for us, have some stability and so on and so forth. And so even though the Bay Area was rough and the Sacramento was mm -hmm. rough as well, I still felt like I was able to uh, kind of create my own identity moving out here versus living in the Bay Area where uh, where my dad was 
pretty famous, maybe not for the best of things, or having cousins that are kind of living in the streets and running the streets and X, Y, and Z. I got a chance to kind of create something for myself, uh, but learning those different things and was able to use that to be effective in the work that I'm doing today. Now, you mentioned your mom. Yes, um, my superhero. So My first one. Okay, first superhero. Yes. Tell me a little bit about now, did, did she encourage you? Did you always know that you were going to empower people this way and, and, and speak out to people and, and help people? Or was it a little bit of like her encouraging you like, hey, listen, I think you got this talent. Yeah. I, I think you should you know, try reaching out to people. Yes. Like, How did that actually come to act? <sighs> Good question. And I'm doing a better job of slowing down to make sure I'm answering it in a way where I'm being as intentional as possible. Uh, but I know it's a multiple of reasons, a lot of reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, she's definitely one of them. She definitely modeled a lot of ways of like perseverance. Um, is at a point in time where she had to really like stop for a second and realize that if she didn't like clean up her life, that she wasn't going to have me and my brother at one point. Like she wasn't going to be able to keep us. Mm -hmm. And so it was at one point she had to give us up and like get clean, quote unquote. Right. Mm -hmm. And she made that decision. And the ripple effect is what you see today. And so that's why she's my superhero, not just because mm -hmm. what you see with people with capes, but people persevering out their own struggles and what they a circumstance was and making it like if you see my mom today you wouldn't even know all the stuff she went through right mm -hmm. and so that's definitely one of my biggest examples of persevering and taking it to the next level uh, but I also would say my father right uh, my father was uh, murdered a month before I was born wow. and in a lot of ways uh, people say I look just like him which is a blessing I don't take the, I, that's a big part of it right mm -hmm. but the part that really resonates with me man is the fact that they say I act just like him uh, even like my skill set and the way I show up in the world um, they sound very much like them. Uh, and what's important for me, especially with working with young people, is I, I truly say it, I say it all the time and I truly believe it. If he had a project optimism, if he had a life work book, if he had you as a mentor, if he had me as uh, a brother, uh, he would be doing great things, right? He would have had a mm -hmm. better opportunity to kind of see what his greatness could have been outside of the streets. Mm -hmm. But when you, you, when you only could be what you can see is a real right, thing. Right, right. You know? And so it's a lot more things, but I know uh, I can keep going on and on. Shout out to Too Short, but I'm just playing. <laughs> Go ahead. What you, what you think? No, I, I, I resonate with that because I'm actually from the Bay Area as yeah. well, you know, from Oakland, California. Yeah. And I, I agree with you, you know, um, people don't necessarily always know like what they can be because if you don't get that exposure early mm -hmm. at a young age, yeah. then even if someone's telling you like right. you can be more, it, it, it don't resonate with them. Yeah. Because they ain't never seen nobody else For be sure. more. And then also, you know, they, they just, you're sometimes you, you are a product of your environment yeah. because you just don't have any other experience. It's right. like asking somebody, like telling somebody what space is like. And, you know, oh, you know, you can travel around space and stuff like yeah. that. I'm like, wow, I don't know nobody who ever, you know, traveled right. around space. I mean, the stuff you're saying just don't resonate with don't me. Don't resonate. And so, you know, I, I really feel that wholeheartedly. Um, you know, something like uh, something else that you mentioned, you okay, first person, graduate from Monterey Trails. Was it at that point after graduation from high school that you knew that you wanted to, you know, do Oh, I, I love to tell this story, man, because the goal is to never be just a role model, but be, be a real model, right? Mm -hmm. As I want to tell, like I tell people all the time, I love quotes, y'all. And so what I would say every time, bro, is like, if I tell you all my successes on this podcast, that's cool. People be like, oh, that's cool. I'm proud of him. He's doing great things, right? Cool. But the way I connect with people is I tell them my flaws. I tell them where, mm. where I need to grow, where, where I fell short or what didn't work because mm -hmm. that's where you grow a lot mm -hmm. of times. Like the wind is cool, but the, the L's is where you learn the most, right? And so I would say um, in a lot of ways, like I'm trying to, how do I, how do I break it down when we only, have so, we only have a little bit of time with each other? <laughs> where do I start? Just like start where you just really. So, so I, I got you, bro. Cause okay. I want to be honest with you. This is the reason why I started off that way. Um, I was people pleasing when I uh, got out of high school. Uh, mm -hmm. I just was going down the conveyor belt of like, when you get out of uh, school, if you got the grades, you go to college, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I always do, I always want to uh, point this part out is I love HBCUs. I went to uh, the HBCU tour and last minute I punked out and I'm like, you know, I ain't trying to go far uh, anymore, right? And so I happened just to apply to like some state colleges and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, forth, right? And I only went to Fresno State just because it wasn't too far and it wasn't too close. But once again, I didn't know what the heck I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I was people pleasing. So I went there, but I had no vision for it. Um, at the time, I liked sports. So I'm going to be a sports agent. I didn't know what I, what I didn't know. Um, and what I always encourage people to understand is when you're going after your purpose and you're trying to find out what's for you, you got to touch it. And so I take pride in being a learn by doer. And so mm -hmm. I didn't find my purpose until I actually started doing the work. And then mm -hmm. school and education and educating myself made more sense because I knew where I was putting it.
Mm. And I think in a lot of ways, I want to put as many things in front of a young person's face for them to see what they want to do. And I always encourage internships, volunteer, find out who's already doing things that you care about to see, mm. to be informed, to see if that's what you want to do. And so I got to figure that out later. Uh, but in that moment of coming out of high school, I was just following the trends of what they tell you to do. I like that, man. That's very real and, and honest. Yeah. Um, something that came to mind as you were talking about that is, um, so obviously, you know, like you say, you're people pleasing and, and, you know, somewhere along the line, you started to be like, you know, what? I'm just going to be me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by being you, mm -hmm. you started to have more success. Yep. Right. Now, what stands out to me is like, why youth? Right. Yeah. Like, what is it? Because like in my mind, I think, you know, automatically it's because of like what you went through and how you grew up. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you know what? I want to kind of change the outcome of somebody else, some young person. So they don't have to maybe go through the same Absolutely. things that I went through. So I can assume that it, it's, it stems from that, right? It does, but let me, let me give you real-time conversations I have with young people often, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'm doing uh, leadership groups and I'm giving them opportunity to kind of see their greatness on their campus within their community, right? But I tell them they're my superheroes because I wasn't thinking like them when I was their age. Mm -hmm. I got middle schoolers thinking about how they could be the change in their community. I got high schoolers thinking in that way, right? And I, wasn't, I was thinking about me, me, and me when I was that age, right? Mm. And so for them to be selfless and think in that way, that's true legacy work. And so what I would like to say, uh, just so you kind of get more context of how I fell into my calling, because I absolutely fell into it, is I was throwing club events and concerts. Uh, back to my boy Trace, me and him used to throw club cool, events and club concerts. Event. Okay. Oh, we had it. We had the city on fire, <laughs> <laughs> fire. Um, but the reason why I'm uh, saying that is like, even for me spiritually, like God was like, hey, I want you to obtain these skills because I'm gonna have you do something different with it down the road, mm -hmm. right? And so that was a blessing to be able to experience that. But what was happening was I would have a great month uh, promotions, a okay month and a whatever month. And like, you can't pay the bills that way, right? right. And so I'm like, okay, if I, while I'm going, because this is when I came back from Fresno State, by the way, right? Only went there for two years. Was like, this is too much money. I'm coming back, mom. What's going on? Like, right. let, let me figure this out. And then I turned into a man where it's like, what you doing in my house? You need to figure this out. So. Anyway, that made me go back to what I need to do in life, right? And so I was making money with the promotions, but it wasn't sustainable. And I'm like, if I just get a day job to compliment my, prom my promoting while I'm going to school, it's game over. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that that was about to be the calling on my life. So what was your day job? You ready for that? I'm ready for it. <sighs> my favorite people in this world is foster youth, man. Like, mm -hmm. absolutely. I fell in love with this work because I worked at a temporary foster care for four and a half years. And from the very first week, I realized that this is exactly what God wanted me to do. I don't know what it looks like in its entirety, but I know that I have never felt more purposeful. I've never felt so sure about something in my entire life mm. until I met my wife. So we'll talk about <laughs> it. That was later on. <laughs> right. uh, but I've never been so sure about it, right? And so what I want you to know is, and it goes back to me modeling what I tell young people to do, is I worked for two different nonprofits and a school district before I took that leap of faith to do my entrepreneurship and to fill those gaps, mm -hmm. which is a gym. Like I want people to understand what I'm saying, as in, if you're gonna do something, you should go see about it in its entirety mm -hmm. before you say you're gonna do it because right. you, you might not even like it. You might step into it and think you wanna work with young people and you got a good heart. Don't mean you're gonna be effective with those young people because they don't play. Uh, but let me let you cook a little bit. I know you probably have some follow-ups. <laughs> no, okay, so first of all, that's very powerful. And the fact that you, know, you met like, are you found your calling once yeah. you started, you know, working at that, uh, that foster care? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm so happy for you that you that you found it because a lot of people yeah. are still trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And some people actually, unfortunately, never find that. And so anytime I hear about a person to come on a show yep. and and they have that, they yep. have found out and they're, and they're you know, living it, they're, they're yep. doing the work, yep. they're living how they're supposed to be living. Yeah. I always think, man, like that's that's what I want to spread. I want yep. more people like you out there. I yep. want to share your stories, you yep. know, more, more stories like that. And, and no plug to the book, bro, but that's really what the Life Work book is all about, man. When you're trying to find your calling, that's a part of the journey is going after it in a way where your passion and your, your calling is to find your calling, right? Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, you got to just take everything off this freaking table to find out what works for you because it really is things out. And I say this all the time and I mean it is literally things out there that only you can do. Mm. only you can do this right here like your name is here <laughs> if you didn't have the connections if you didn't know a kaifa all these different things align you know mm -hmm. and you giving me a platform to hopefully help and support more people to just help them see themselves because it's already in them you know and so 
not even a shameless plug, a blessing of a plug to tell people this life work book is allowing for you to walk in your purpose because it's all, all it's doing is helping you see you. It's a reflective uh, experience, if you will. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back after these messages. Every day amazing with Sky Alton. What's up, y'all? It's your man Lance Woods. I'm here on Every Day Amazing with my boy Sky Alton. Y'all make sure y'all pull up and enjoy the show. And not just this show, every show. Every time you see Every Day Amazing, it's going to be amazing every day. Or they couldn't call it that. Duh. Every Day Amazing with Sky Alton. Welcome back to the show. I'm still here with Mr. Easley. Um, before we went to break, um, you know, you kept uh, plugging the, the, the book and we, you know, we kept mentioning it. So I'm just going to bring that out. And uh, tell me a little bit more about how this life works, how this, you know, became to be. Well, check out the cover, man. Uh, if you see the details of the cover behind life work, it's saying homework, right? And it's crossing it out intentionally because I was that student. Mm -hmm. I was that student that asked my teacher, how can I use what you're teaching me in this class in life? And I was, and yes, I was, a, I call myself an on-topic class clown. But when I asked that particular question, I wasn't trying to be rude. I was being authentic mm -hmm. because I'm like, in order for me to truly pay attention in your class or fully grasp what you're trying to give me right now, how can I apply it like immediately? How can I actually make money? How can I be effective in life? And if you couldn't tell me that it was hard for me to truly want to like care about this particular subject that you're trying to push at me, I'm right? in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so um, I always say, I don't want to give you homework. I want to give you life work, tools that you can use for the rest of your life. That's sustainable. And that's how I looked at it, right? And so speaking of that book, it was more of a, a calling, bro. Like it really was. I'm, I want to keep on going spiritual with you every now and then because I got to tell you my truth. And I woke up at four in the morning. Wifey was like, why are you tossing and turning? And I'm like, I don't know. And I just pulled out my, uh, my notepad and my phone. Mm -hmm. And it just felt like an upload. Like it felt like an upload of all the different things, all the years of uh, uh, um, facilitating, speaking, creating spaces. I'm big on building community. I'm big on icebreakers. I'm big on questions. I'm big on just reflection right mm -hmm. and by the end of that night because i didn't fully get to go to sleep i had like 70 concepts just on that one night of the different things i've been doing for a very long time it just felt like it was time right right and so even with life work and you see it says part one for a reason mm -hmm. uh i probably have two and a half worth of pages of content or, or uh two and a half worth of books of content that i'm still rolling out and want to take my time with it because I want people to kind of digest that and give me feed forward, not just feedback, feed forward uh, for me to see what's working and what's allowing for people to just operate in their purpose. But it really was an extension to what I was already doing, mm -hmm. but also I felt like compelled to do it. Uh, and then uh, the last part I want to say to it, because it's not a traditional book. Um, I definitely have a lot of those books in me when it comes down to the storytelling I know I'm going to bring to the world. Mm -hmm. But this was more so of telling people when I give people that book, like you're going to have that book when I leave uh, here. And I tell people all the time, you're going to make that a masterpiece because mm -hmm. it's like therapy. If you don't if you don't work it, it doesn't work. And it's reflective in that way where I'm just asking questions. I'm asking it's different challenges, it's different requests, mm -hmm. it's, it's different QR codes in the book that's videos and okay. i'm very much putting my personality in it like it's videos for me building out the text telling the story and so i was able to do something untraditional but i've been untraditional my whole life now man you have accomplished so much right and i and, and it almost feels like you know a short amount of time of you know when you found your purpose to like how we got here but i know that's not the case i know mm -hmm. it has been a lot of you know work behind the scenes talk to me a little bit about some of the challenges and how you got past some challenges like me just thinking on a question i want to throw at you was like when you found your purpose how was it getting others to believe in it? like your friends and family your family probably that's that's easy right but like friends and getting people to like really kind of get on board and support because i know sometimes like we have a vision right it's like a painting and everybody don't get it yes. right sometimes it takes a little you got to fill in the painting a little bit more before people start really yes. finally start to get the vision Absolutely. right and so with you, you know, having this vision and knowing what you want to do, just tell me a little bit about, man, like how you handle criticism, yeah. how you handle adversary, uh, adversity, because I know being like such a, you know, social empowerment person, um, you know, there, there's going to be, there's going to be doubters, right? There's yes, going to be people who are questions. So how, how you handle that? So um, you said, so the question is brilliant. But I, it was a part of your question where I wanted to interject. But let me just let me just say it so I can tell you. <laughs> um, 
believe it or not, my family loved me. My friends loved me. I know that. But they actually wasn't the ones that was supportive like you would think, right? When you start mm. something, you think that the closest people right. are going to be there for you. Right. Believe it or not, in a lot of ways, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true at all. And then what I would say is even when we started uh, Project Optimism, I remember like back in the day, like, I think GoFundMe is probably dead now, but when we first started eight years ago, we were like, we're going to do a GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. You know some people. I know a lot of people. If we just get, everybody just give a dollar, we, right. we already we, got some yeah, starting we're in business. Yeah. We, we, we really realized yeah. that it was not, not, not it, that easy. But it was a blessing too though, right? Because mm -hmm. we took the stairs and we got a lot of opportunity to really, really trust in the abilities that we had and kind of similar to adding to your question. And I have an analogy for you that I love to, to say is like, if you're broken, if your car is broke down on the side of the road, right, mm -hmm. and you're just in there kind of like, man, it's all messed up, it's smoking and stuff like that, maybe somebody might help you, right? Right. But if you get out your car and you're pushing it and you're seeing somebody's pushing That's it, good, yeah. in a lot of ways, people yeah. are willing to jump on board. Yeah, because you're already doing the work. You're already doing the work. But what I will say is we, got, we were just consistent. We put our heads down and just went tunnel vision, right? Mm -hmm. We were consistent. We were very passionate. Um, in a lot of ways, we made so many sacrifices. We put our money up. Um, we lost sleep. Uh, we beg, we beg schools for opportunities just for us to love on their babies. Um, I took a leap of faith. I sold my nice car. I moved out of my 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 comfortable apartment at thirty years old. It was sacrifice after sacrifice. It was belief after belief. But like I said, when you when you call to do something, bro, you'll do whatever for it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I I would say in a lot of ways, like. Yes, it was doubt, and it was doubt, and even even with some family members that meant well, because they couldn't see the vision, they even was like, are you sure, X, Y, and Z? And it's mm. like, when I'm sure about something, uh, and when I want to do something, I'm going to push so hard towards it, so I don't have no what ifs, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want any of our young people, I don't want you to have no what ifs, because at the end of the day, it's people that's counting on you going after it. So mm -hmm. what if is not even an option, right? I think with all the great people, all the great people that's going out and doing great things, they had to like not even think no was even in the English language. You know what I'm saying? Like they couldn't like it has to be obsolete. Like it can't be it can't be there. And I think in a lot of ways, um, that energy was was contagious. Mm -hmm. And so where my support came from is a lot of people that didn't even know me. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people that I met on the journey. A lot of people that I thought was just going to volunteer end up being one of our top people. Shout out to, to Janine Cruz. She's going to see this one day. She started as a volunteer and worked her way up where she's an associate director, right? Wow. Um, at one point, my uh, my co-founder was going to get his master's, and I was kind of holding down the fort for a little bit. And I actually got us a lot of motion. So when he got done with his master's program, I was able to present him with opportunity. Like, how much, how much money are you making at the university? Because it's right. time for us to make that move, you know? And I think in a lot of ways, everybody has to do their part and everybody has to be assured about their part and be a star in their role. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in the, depending on what chapter you're in right now, if you're not being hyper vigilant of like what your assignment is, you miss the opportunity to do great things, you know. Mm -hmm. And so my bad, I love quotes. I love to kind of hit it no, in that I, way. I, I like but, it. But I, I would say like um, I just we just kept going. We just kept doing what we needed to do to, to be that change. And what I would say is you unlock goals when you reach goals. And so, life work book, a book in our mind doesn't rhyme for a reason. I never even thought that was a part of what I need to do, right? Mm -hmm. But as you keep on getting higher and higher towards what you need to do, you, you, you find... It, it, it's, you, like, it's like a video game, bro. It's like you unlocking stuff like, oh, shoot, okay, here, Mario. I, I, I got that. Yeah. You know, I got that power. I didn't even know I had yeah, that in me. For I, sure, for sure. I and like that. And so, I just, I think, I think the biggest thing, if we're having an audience of really listen, listening to what they want to do, I need them to understand that it might be the closest people uh, to you that love you to death that might be the people that you don't need to listen to you know because of their limitations of what they might be going through respectfully you know but no, that might that. be the truth now we actually have a couple of pictures of um, some of your work in action so oh come we, on we, yeah I, we, we gonna bring that my up my teammate must have sent you that okay <laughs> Ooh, Tell this, me about this, this is a good one so this is um, the Elevate Youth Conference it was a two day conference that I was asked to MC the whole thing and I want to make sure it's clear as like, I'm going to MC, but I call myself an empowerment facilitator. Can I have spaces with these 800 to 900 people that I'm able to really help them on their journey to be able to ask some thought provoking questions? These are people from all over California. I want them to network. I want the young people to network. I want the adults to network because in a lot of ways you go to a conference and if you don't get the opportunity or if you're not getting out of your comfort zone, you're getting in the way of some great things that could happen, you know? Right. 
with just meeting somebody that's doing something similar, some similar work, and y'all should be collaborating, right? Mm. And so I did a lot of like reflective questions and games and challenges, and uh, I tore that place up, man. Where like after that event right there, I'd have had probably seven different uh, speaking engagements from that alone. Um, now I understand that we're dropping some exclusive products, you Ooh, know, or you know, some exclusive stuff on there. the show, man. So t tell me a little bit about that, man. So before, thank you for asking this. Uh, before uh, we put out part two of the Life Workbook, mm -hmm. um, I'm big on community. I love bringing people together. I love people having conversations. I love like icebreakers, like I told you again, and like the book. I always encourage that because when I'm speaking, I'm able to give the book. And it's, you know, a lot of times a part of what booking me is, is I'm asking for them to give a book to every family or every young person or something like that. Right. But I'm like, let me take it to the next level because this is totally on brand on how I show up as an empowerment facilitator. And so what you guys are going to see here mm -hmm. is two different versions. Let me make sure I don't have it upside down. <laughs> two different versions of the life work of the life work experience uh, right now in a card form. And so the first one's called fun work which is like lighthearted questions, fun games, activities, just to build community mm -hmm. amongst uh, jobs, amongst uh, schools, amongst uh, family and friends. And uh, this is kind of like just getting you started, just kind of get people rolling to get comfortable to get to know each other. And then you got hard work. Hard work is the deeper conversations, the legacy mm -hmm. talk. Uh, I'll give you an example within uh, the card game. It asks is, um, young people, what advice would you give to the uh, the the older generation, like if the young people, what, what advice would you give to the older generation? What can you give them, right? And then it's a flip of it. It's like uh, the OGs in the world. It's not saying that verbatim, but uh, what advice would you give to, to young people, right? Where I want a cross-generational uh, conversation to happen amongst people that maybe not even have a chance right, if they right. didn't have this card game in their hand, right? And that's just one example, right? But I think uh, for me, this unlocked because that went so well man i want to thank you for coming on the show yeah. man and just sharing about some of the the Come great on. community work that you do continue to do the good work brother you too. i want to continue to you know keep seeing you grow yeah um and it's just a blessing man that i that i was going to meet someone Absolutely. like you and have you on my platform on. just to spread that word so yes. thank you again man and um yep. and i and i have a i have a um a pencil for you, bro. Um, and it's one of the biggest messages uh, from the book. And it just says, you're the most important project you will ever work on. I just want you to never forget that. So that was my last thing I wanted to say. I know we're wrapping up. Thank you for having me, bro. And it's all love. All love. I appreciate yeah, that. Sure. Thank you to the folks out there for watching another episode of Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Be sure to check us out on Exa Sacramento Channel 17 every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. And you can also check out past episodes on Everyday Amazing at Everyday Amazing on YouTube.com. Um, can't wait to see you guys next time and continue to keep watching. Everyday amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday amazing. Everyday amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday amazing. Everyday amazing with Sky Alton.